I don't know about you. Hi, I'm Tammy Kane, by the way. Welcome to my channel. I should say that. I don't know about you, but I love painting loose florals and this is no exception. So today we are painting this crazy bunch. It kind of looks insane in terms of the amount of work. Yes, it is a pretty long tutorial, but you can do it. It's got a lot of details, maybe too many details. I don't know, but I had a lot of fun painting it. Um, we're going to call them peonies. There's a purple bluish guy in there, whatever. It's a loose floral. Let's go ahead and paint it. I'm excited. Are you excited? Let's do it. Okay, so we're starting our bouquet and we're going to use, I have a number 12 round brush, so a fairly large brush. I have a number eight as well. And I have a number two. These are Princeton Heritage. These are Christy Rice. I've got my Paul Rubens palette. I've got my Saunders Waterford watercolor, 100% cotton paper. And I've got this lovely little reference book, if you don't know what it is, the Flower Color Theory book. And all these things are linked. There's a hair. link to my profile if you wanna check that out. If you're interested in purchasing these or just checking them out, just looking. All right, so today we're gonna start with some fun stuff. This is the sample I did the other day. It doesn't look anything like that, but that's kind of what I do. I like to use my reference just as a light guide to give me inspiration. And then I just, you know, add details and add different things in as I see fit. So I encourage you to paint like that if that works for you. Sometimes it might feel a little daunting but you know, copying, you know, what you, what you see also is a great skill too. So we are going, you know, paint how you want to. Um, I like to change it up because then I can put my paintings in my shop at, on Etsy and I know it's, it's an original. So, okay, so we're just adding in some really lovely light petals here, keeping them wispy. And we've got these really beautiful, beautiful peonies happening. I want to make them a little bigger. I want to make them a little bit rounder there, shorter, meaning the perspective, you know, it's um, flipped a little bit. So the perspective is different than straight on. And let's go ahead and do some more of those. I'm going to do a good amount of pink balloons and I'm not keeping them super, super close together because I, I do want to add other flowers in there too. But this is kind of the idea that I'm looking at right here. Again, inspiration. So I don't know if you are a quick painter or if you are a slower painter. Either way, wonderful. I just kind of, I've learned to paint quickly and maybe I need to slow down and be more methodical about my brush strokes. I don't know. Um, it's just kind of how it is. And my hands, you know, when I'm writing, my hands go quickly as well. That's just been, I don't know if I don't have patience to like, slow down and chill or whatever, but it's kind of funny. But we all kind of paint differently and you figure out what style works for you. So with your peonies, um, these, and these are really interesting because they're very much thin, almost like the Dahlia, but they're not Dahlias. And you can see that peony center. I just love adding these swooping petal shapes here. They just make me happy swooping and swarming and doing all the things adding a little bit of purple in there changing up just a little bit let's try to do this one here because yeah, i don't know i feel like i want to so i'm always leaving room and uh, for the center and we're swooping up here and swooping over here and you know this is just the mapping out the flower shape so you really can change up with your details later how it looks if you wanted to, you could just do a circle like a blob and then add it in, adding in, you know, petal details later if you wanted to. But, you know, and, and look at that. See, I am adding them closer together than I thought because this is what I do, people. I just kind of have a rough plan and then we just do whatever. So there you go. That's what I'm doing today. Okay, I'm going to do one more here and I'm just going to try to make it pretty even, the petals swooping over, swooping under, keeping them all about the same um, length so that we're, you know, seeing a, a forward facing peony situation. All right, so we've got them mapped out right there. What do we want to add in? Let's start adding in some other colors because we can make it more, more fun like that. Got this lovely kind of smoky, I don't know why I'm saying smoky, but adding some brown to that. A little bit of a smoky purple, there we go. That's making it more of a smoky purple. That's pretty, a little bit more water. 
And then we can start putting in, let's go ahead and put in some, what do you wanna do? Let's do like these little guys. There's some pretty, I don't know, that could be snapdragons or, why am I singing snapdragons? Sure, snapdragons. It could be that, or it could be maybe larkspur. But I love using the shape of the brush to do the work for me. So I'm angling my brush because I want them to go a certain direction. You could even, ooh, that's dark. I did not mean to dip into that. What's going on today? Okay. <laughs> All right. So with this, we are just adding in those brush strokes, and then we'll go ahead and add in some leaves and things later. And I wanna do another section right here. We're going this way. And so our petals, oh look at that, that shape is actually pretty good. Going this way was totally fine. Oh, I guess I, my brush wants to go into this deep purple. So while this is still wet, we can just start adding in a little bit of that and a little bit more there, just to bring in some really pretty purple marks to contrast our pink. Nice, okay, so I'm just leaving that there for a second. I just can't help but starting to connect things with green, guys. You know, it just brings your piece together when you start adding in those green portions. All of a sudden, something that was a little bit more abstract becomes alive. And so, and I just am using that green that's on my palette. So really thin brushes is a number two round Princeton Heritage, and I love it because look at these marks, you know? Really thin, you can get those details in, in, and I think it looks really pretty. So, get this one going here. Guys, if you are liking this video, I have to ask you, please hit the like button, and feel free to subscribe to my channel too, and hit that notification button so you get all the updates whenever I am posting something, all the things. These little lavenders, we're gonna call them lavender. They're like really large blooms. <laughs> Sometimes they you know, tend to be smaller. Um, they're coming together, I have to say. And I like that this is really light and this is getting darker over here. Just a nice little contrast. Okay, let's add in some more florals. I'm skipping now to number eight, my number eight round. And, um, and I'm keeping it light so I can go ahead and add really pretty layers. Let's do some of this. This is an orangey yellow thing happening in here. Um, let's see what's going on. I really want a light version of this. So I'm adding lots of water. Why do I have two waters here? So the whole idea is that I should clean my brush with one and get most of the paint out and then dip into pretty fresh, clean water. And then my brush will be a lot cleaner that way. But I just don't follow that rule. Just because I'm talking and painting with you guys, and I, I just forget. Honestly, I forget what I was gonna do. So anyway, we're gonna do some cool, like maybe a side facing floral right here. I love at the idea of adding in this kind of orangey, orangey um, yellow floral. And you know, where else am I gonna put him? Okay, maybe another one here. I don't know, I feel like we'll just connect it, you know, with some cool stems popping out. And I don't know, I'm just trying to figure out where to place. So as you can see, I'm not following this. It's just, you know, it's really just for me to be able to have an idea and inspiration. And it does help me, it really does help me. Um, if I'm like, okay, what petal shape should I make? Or, you know, where should I put things? I look at this and it does give me an idea of, you know, what I want to do next. So I find it to be a good source um, and helpful. All right, we've got this beautiful reddish purple and it's gorgeous. And we are going to do a little bit more concentrated maybe than the others, just cause that's what I feel like doing. I wanna do something kind of like these sweet peas. Sweet peas are fun because um, you just kind of like, kind of blob on, you know, some of this paint on here, squiggly, scraggly, brushing on those brush strokes. Brushing the brush strokes, guys, like that. So it's kind of like a teardrop shape, but it's messy and kind of nuts. We're gonna add some down here too. I think I'm going for like this elongated look. Not quite sure, but I'm just going like this, you know, adding some of this on. I feel like these flowers are just like these really interesting folded florals with lots of petals. I don't quite understand them. 
um, how they all wrap around, but they're beautiful. We were on an RV trip this summer and along the coast of California, we were seeing these uh, sweet peas, just all different variations of colors, just popping up along the road. I was just obsessed with them. And they were also hard to put in a bouquet. I'm gonna take my number two because the way that the, the kind of on these vine situations actually, and so like you've got the stem, but then you've got these like thick things coming off and then there's different florals here. And it was hard to bunch them together um, to create a bouquet, which is what I wanted to do and take a picture. And I did it, but it was challenging. It's kind of weird, but they're so pretty. They're so, so cute. All right, so adding these little stems in, connecting everybody together, I like having these, these colors. So how is your painting coming along? I hope you're enjoying this process. Um, and I'm gonna add some greenish, greenish, some teal green to this for these guys here. I hope you are enjoying, if you are painting with me, you know, I hope you are enjoying that process. And if not, like I say, encourage you to just think of one or two things that you do like, whether it's the composition, whether it's the colors, whether it's just the fact that you're taking time to paint, which I'm really proud of you for doing. If you're painting with me, and maybe you're painting later on. Um, how exciting to be able to share those moments and um, just being able to, to practice your skills and all that stuff. So guys, we're going to do some greenery now. I've got this lovely watery mix of green on my palette, so I'm just gonna go ahead and utilize that. And here, you know what? I can change my mind, right? I do this a lot. I just kind of changed my mind. I'm gonna get some purple, a little more purple on here. And I think I just wanted to add some purple in here. Whether that's lavender or these little maybe violets in between, I was gonna go with greens and then I thought, you know what? Let's add in some sweet floral moments as well. Some drops of color can do some green in between as well too. But just thought it might be very nice to do tonight and just add a little bit more here and we've got these little moments of purple pink those the, the um, purpley pink as i like to call it and yeah there's no rules so just get out your paintbrush and start creating i mean really that's what i ask of you <laughs> and if you feel inspired in any way from watching me paint today then that's a glorious thing to know let me know in the comments if you feel inspired to paint something in particular and what it's gonna be. So I have these three moments here, these raspberry colors. I don't wanna put a fourth because that's really symmetrical and kinda weird. So I'm actually going to add my, more of that lavender up here as something to kind of extend this area here. And that was kind of my thought process in that section, in this section of the painting. And I thought I would share it with you because yeah, that's what I was thinking. And if you want, you can add some really tiny leaves too, just to, as Clara Snome says, to fluff it out. That's kind of her term that she's coined, to fluff it out and just make it all come together. All right, so now I'm ready to add in some green. I am ready. My number eight round is ready to go. And you know, here I want to just, I'm going to utilize the brush shape Guys, I want this to be as easy as possible, okay? Make it easy on yourself. Just pressing down you know, with the belly of the brush, light pressure or heavy pressure, depending on how thick you want your lines, and to create some of those leaves, okay? And they don't have to even connect. They can just be more abstract. Um, we are going to do some of that over here. I love my florals just to be really close together really close together. And I feel like it's been, you know, I, me, I like to talk about mental health. I was thinking, trying to figure out what could my little, what could I call myself? Like, it's your favorite mental health artist, therapist, or mental health therapist artist, which is like a whole mouthful. I don't know. What should I call myself? <laughs> I just, I don't see a lot of people, artists talking about mental health, you know, on here and I could be wrong, but I haven't, I just haven't seen a lot of that. And so I'm trying to, I'm trying to do that and encourage the talk of mental health more because it's so important for us to feel good about ourselves and find ways to learn 
how to take care of ourselves better. So I'm not just, I'm not doing leaf shapes at this moment necessarily, like little leaves. I'm just doing these three or four marks, you know, that we can connect together later. Okay, so I'm looking at my paper here and I think at this point, what do I wanna do? Because I have to fig, kind of finagle and figure out what I'm gonna put. I already have this space happening here and I might wanna add in some more filler, but I think I wanna start working on my big blooms so that I can figure out where I'm going from here. So we're gonna go with our mid-tone colors and we have our pink here on our palette. Lovely, lovely. And then we have our purpley pink color. And so as, as we are painting, I'm going to start adding in some kind of some cool marks and lines. And I want you just to, you know, paint how you'd like to. But what I want to do is start maybe separating some of these petal spaces. And then I'm going to make some marks here. And then maybe right here as well. And then I might do some thicker ones where you're just gonna spread it out and maybe some thinner ones too, like this. And you can even take a smaller brush if you'd like. So what I wanna do now is take my brush, I dabbed it on a paper towel after I rinsed it. And I want to just kind of, you know, take away some of the, 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 the harsh lines. There you go, that's what I'm trying to say. And just blend things together a little bit more. So that's that second layer, those are those mid-tones, and then we could come back in, finally, at the end, and do some really little line details, just more subtle details over the top, just to give it an extra bit of pizzazz. So that's kind of how I'm doing that floral right now. Let's try on this purpley, um, purpley pink color here. So we'll get that going as well. There we go. So I'm curious what you are grateful for. Are you grateful for something today? Um, are you kind of struggling with something and need to feel a little bit of gratefulness for the good things that are happening? I mean, honestly, it can be really hard to feel gratefulness if you feel like, man, I've really been feeling slighted lately or, you know, life has just not been going my way. And so then it's kind of like, well, why do I have to feel grateful? You know, what's the point of that? And how am I even able to achieve that? So, and I would encourage you to sit down and think of a list of things that you are thankful for because it really does, it changes your mindset. It changes the way you're able to get through things, even changes your tolerance of pain when you have a better attitude. And it's kind of nuts. And so, you know, sometimes we are upset and we just want to be upset. But if we can find ways to count our blessings, it gives us a little reprieve from some of the yuck. All right, guys, so see what I'm doing? I just, I added in some, some thick lines and then some thicker ones, and then I just blended it with water. So we're trying to make our little peonies or florals here, loose florals, more fluffy. And so we're adding in that second layer, and then we'll do the details over the top later, and it's gonna give us a whole nother look. So and I'm mixing some of that pink with the purple and we'll see what we come up with here. So that's what I'm trying today. I'm just going kind of quickly, sometimes outlining some of this like here, sometimes like pressing down the belly and just really, you know, blending that together. You can do different colors too. You don't have to stick with this, you know, one color. Um, and it starts to feel kind of weird until I, I grab my brush, I kind of clean it off, and then I dab it, and then I just start blending some of that color in. I do not want to cover up all the original first color with our mid-tones. Of course, I, I'm trying to make this look fluffy by adding lots of layers to our flower. And that's what's going to look like there's lots of petals happening here. I want to do another kind of pinky color situation. So I'm going to grab some more of that. It's okay if, you know, it's a little more intense. See what I'm doing? I'm just kind of, you know, marking out where that center is and going around it. And then just, I'm getting more bold as I feel more confident in my painting practice. If you feel like something looks kind of weird, you know, you can blend it out with water. You can even lift some of it with with water and a damp, clean brush. I can show you that right now if you've never done lifting. So clean your brush as best you can, dab it on a paper towel, and then just run over that color with your brush. 
maybe a couple times, rinse, dab, and more. And you can see I've, I've taken off some of that color. All right, so it's a little bit lighter. Depending on the type of color you have down, some of them are more staining and some others are not. Um, it might be easier or harder to lift. All right, so we've got our painting going on here. It looks kind of fun. I think I wanna add in more greener at this point. My, my ankles are cracking. You know what, let's start with the middles. The middle needs some pizzazz. So I did start out saying these were peonies. That doesn't mean they have to stay that way. We can actually add in some more interesting centers if you'd like, um, really up to you. But I'm gonna start adding in with this, um, this lovely yellowy orange color. I've got my number two round and I've got a pretty good mix of color on my palette. And so we're gonna mix that up. And let's see here, we're gonna start. Here's what I found. Oh, Siri. Siri thinks I was asking her something. Isn't that fun? You guys have any fun stories with Siri? <laughs> oh my goodness, she's a hoot. Okay, so I'm going to start adding in my center here. Pretty thin marks. If you need more paint, then grab some. And I am just trying to go around the center here. And I've got this kind of wide star shape happening. Also, I'm going to do a little circle-y thing in the middle, and then I'm gonna go around a little bit more and darken up. Look at how cute that center can be, and there's a lot of white space, totally fine. Don't worry about it. And we can always darken that later too if we want to. So now I'm going to grab my yellow, and here we go. This is our cadmium yellow. All right, and we're gonna add that to this one. Is it still wet? I think it's okay. We're gonna skip it for now. It's a little bit wet. We're just going to add in our yellow for this one. So the peony is known for its yellow center, right? Pretty classic, and the stamen just kind of stick out everywhere. So that's what we're doing today. If I put in a black center, it's gonna look more, I mean, the, the flower doesn't look like a, a peony, but, or sorry, a poppy. But it's definitely gonna look more like a poppy, depending on the center, and that's something kind of cool to keep in mind. And we might have to do a few more layers. Yellow is hard to show up. We might do like an orange layer on top to just add in a little bit of that, to make it a little bit more stark, more dark. So, yeah. So this yellow is kind of hard to show up, but that's okay. You will layer it, and yes, your classic peony is gonna have all of these beautiful, beautiful stamen. And then you can also do some little dots too. Um, and just because the stamen sometimes have these really pretty like little edges on the tips. And so I'm just adding those in today. And some yellow in the middle, cause why not? Cause we are fancy. So this means you'll just need to give it a little bit more time before you do the petals because everything is gonna be wet and you don't want them to mix together. All right, so I am grateful for some things. I am very grateful, um, of course, for my family. And my kids are going to school for the first time tomorrow, elementary, and we have homeschooled for many years here. And now they are going off to the world of school and I think my little mommy heart is, uh, it's gone through a lot of emotions, um, ups and downs. And I think I remember nine months ago, almost grieving like, oh my goodness, we have nine months until they go to school and now it's here. Um, and so there is a, a small piece of me that is going to grieve the extra time that you know we have had and it's not gonna be, but I'm also very much realizing that this is time for us. It's time for this to happen. We're all excited for this transition. And the time that we have together, we're gonna to treasure even more because it'll be that much more special. So, you know, treasuring the time that you have with people that you love. You know, when we have less of it, we often we often appreciate it more because we know we, it's not something we can take for granted. And so, there we go. I'm just gonna add in some details on these guys. And so anyway, I'm grateful for my, my children and the experience and I'm ex so excited for them and what they're gonna be learning and, and me working and all this stuff is gonna be really good. So if you can figure out some things, even if life when it's going really 
crazy and you feel like you don't have a lot of options to make you happy, um, you can always find something good that's going on in your life to just draw attention to. So here I've got really thick paint and I'm just kind of doing, like I say, thin and thick lines. I want to create these shadow moments, okay? I want it to look, well, I mean, do I want it to look natural? Yeah, I don't want it to look like I've thought too much about it, okay? Does that make sense? Let's go ahead and do our purple moments here, our lavender. And um, as we're waiting for these stamen to dry, let's just get to that. So get some purple in here. And this is a beautiful shade. We can do this lovely bluish purple. We can also do this reddish purple. And I say reddish because it leans more towards the red side of the color wheel versus this one that leans more of the blue side. So you can have warm. This is a cool purple. This is a warm color. So you can have warm and cool colors and it's kind of fun. All right, so we are just, I'm trying to be methodical here. You know, I said that I typically, I paint really fast. Look at me trying to paint fast. My hand just wants to, and I feel like sometimes I actually feel more comfortable. I'm just not thinking so much about all the painstaking, you know, lines and things I'm putting down. And so I really, I really, um, I really treasure going fast. But then also I think I end up being less creative with my lines, with my marks because I am sort of doing the same hand motions over and over. So, you know, you can just do some lines or you can do some blobs like that and just get it, you know, really simple. And you can skip some too, okay? I, what I want it to do is, you know, be really, you know, natural, but interesting. So you can keep the one layer if you want. I find this just to make everything much more interesting. Um, your composition is gonna pop with all the 3D aspects. Now I'm skipping around. So are you a fast painter or a slow painter? Comment below and let me know, I'm just curious. And if you have a story about gratitude, please share that too. I love hearing your stories. I love hearing what's happened to you, how you have survived, how you have thrived, how you have, whether it's your story just in your personal life or it's about your art, you know, either way, I'd love to hear it. Um, I love to hear stories for a living, and so <laughs> I love to hear your stories. It's great. And then when we share it, our stories, we sometimes, we if, if it's something that was hard, we heal. It helps us to heal when people listen and, and understand where we're coming from. It's a beautiful thing. Okay, what else do we have to go on to here? Just skipping around and... You know, I know I've always skipped somebody over here. I don't want to make this too dark. I'm always aware that I've been going pretty dark lately and I don't want to because I want to keep the lightness of the painting. So I'm going to start doing my third layer for some of these. So we're going back to that pink, but look at this. I'm dipping right in pretty dark. I'm going to go, I'm not going to go crazy. So I just want to add in like some darker moments. Um, with my sample, you'll see that, and this is really cheap paper, so it doesn't have the same quality as you know cotton, but the idea of it is I was just going with some light marks under the really light one and then some, well, some light, the medium, and then the darker ones. These are really dark here. And so you're just kind of sometimes outlining the paper, you know, kind of like this, and going around and just like, See how I'm doing that? Just really, really fast. There it goes again. Just trying to create some really pretty um, shadows and texture. So I think some of these, you know, might be petals upon petals and it's going to create a much more full looking floral if I start adding in some on the top. It's gonna look like there's some on the bottom too. Okay, so I just added water and spread that out. And with some of these, we can just take a clean, damp brush and just spread out some of those, you know, marks that we created so they're not so intense, not so intense and dark. Okay. You can remove some if you put too much down. So, there we go. So methodical. And this is such a 
beautifully relaxing and um, what do you call it? Meditative experience. I'm going to take my brush. I don't know if it's dirty. Dab it. I want to remove some of this paint here. This just became like too intense. And I want to take some of it away. So see, now it's a little bit less there. Okay. All right. I like how that's looking. I feel like if I keep messing with it, I might regret it. So maybe it's time to move on to the next one. Well, at least just leave it here and see how it does. And maybe it'll need some more babysitting later. And maybe not. All right, we've got this beautiful purple color over on this side. So I can even just like, you know, outline what I've already put down. And, you know, I am just trying to be, I'm trying to like think, okay, where would I put these in when I'm doing something random? You know, what makes sense? And, and kind of, you can see how there's this second layer over here and it's kind of tempting to just outline, you know, some of that because it does look like it's a petal that, you know, is on top. So, and what that wasn't necessarily what I was going for, but I'm just etching out some spaces, cleaning the brush, dabbing the brush. Guys, a paper towel on your desk, in my opinion, is so key and helpful. So you can get those marks down and then you can spread, spread, spread. And then you can get some really cool effects through that. And sometimes you don't want to spread it. Sometimes you just want to keep it with those thick, thick marks, dark marks, and just enjoy. And I think this needs a little bit extra. There's a lot of water going down. There we go. Okay, so kind of fun and wild is doing its thing. All right, so this one had a darker one. It looks kind of gray. I don't love that. But I think what I'll do is keep with this bluish purple here and just tone it down. So to tone that down, since we have blue and red in here, we're gonna use a yellow or an orange and that's going to tone it down a lot. And we don't want to put that purple back in the yellow. It's just really, really hard for purple, uh, sorry, really hard for yellow to stay bright and lovely. It gets contaminated so easily. So now we have a more saturated color and that is really, really dark. So let's see how that looks if we blend it in. It looks all right. Um, I think I would like, I might wanna do some blue. Isn't that kind of funny? I might wanna do some blue. Oh, that was purple. Let's say that again. I might wanna do some blue. <laughs> let's try some blue. Blue might be kind of fun. You know, can you have a blue poppy? Oh goodness gracious. I mean, am I really, am I really a realistic painter? No. So yeah, for real, sure thing. You can have a blue poppy. Is this real, oh, poppy? I am getting things mixed up. Is this a, is this a peony? You know, we've been talking like it was. Am I painting from reality? No, I never do, but I use it for inspiration. So yeah, sure. This can be a blue peony and just want to make it i just want to make it fun i hope you're having fun guys if you haven't clicked like on the video and you're having fun please do it really helps me out with the algorithm and helps it know that people are enjoying the channel and we're having a good time together there we go so just spreading that out and i might come back um later with maybe some other color we'll see Just kind of letting that hang out right now. All right, so then we're gonna do some more purple. A little more purple. Of course, I'm using this brush. I'm gonna use the big one for mixing purposes, of course. Okay, so this guy. So if you want to, you know, paint something that is quick and easy just do one layer just do one layer and be done with it and we're just gonna skirt around these petals like that we're just kind of you know sketching it away you know but if you want to create depth and really you know a lot of interest in you in the florals and you've got to take the time to be able to put down those marks so you know sometimes it 
you if you need to take a break, if it's taking too long, you know, take a break, reevaluate where you're at, what you're trying to do, and you know how you're feeling about your artwork. And breaks are really good to get those creative juices flowing again, and then you're not feeling like you know, kind of stuck. Sometimes you're putting the marks down, at least it's happening, it happens to me often, and I'm thinking, well, I don't really feel like I'm getting anywhere. And so I know that that's my, my time to take a break and just, you know, walk away, try again later. And there's nothing wrong with that. So, yeah. And then we're just gonna go up this way, kind of come around, edging and sketching. And then the thicker, the better, right? And then doing this one, then we'll go up here. So my bottom line when I'm doing, you know, these types of things is I want to have asymmetry. That is the big thing I'm going for. So because of that, I am really trying hard not to do the matchy matchy. Take my larger brush. Let's see if I can do a little bit of blending, blendy blending. So yeah, and you know, our brains, they want to do, our brains want to do symmetry. It makes sense to our brains to have everything perfectly lined up and all the things, but that doesn't always, that doesn't always make the most attractive painting. So yeah, don't worry about matching everything up. I'm gonna grab some of this cobalt blue. I feel like this guy is just looking a little bit sad and dull and that cobalt blue is gonna brighten up. Look at that, it's doing it. All right, and I'm using my big brush. It just sometimes there's a floral that's just looking, it's just bringing everybody down. And I just needed him to have a little bit more of a sunny disposition, okay? A little bit more, guy. You can do it. Being grateful, which I forgot to talk about, but yes. Have you made your list of three things that you are grateful for? If not, I encourage you to do it before you go to sleep tonight or before you're starting your work day. What are you happy for and thankful for? Write it down. It's going to help encourage you to remember the good things. Remembering the good helps us to being able to have a good positive attitude and then spread that good to other people as well, which is important. All right, we're gonna do some leaves. So I almost, Oh my goodness, I almost like don't really want to to change too much. I like how things are sort of flowing together, but I might just do like a, a little bit of some like, you know, marks and stuff. Almost like those are vines sticking out. And so I, I, I am trying to do the asymmetry. It is hard, people, it's hard. Because um, like I said, my brain is like, okay, well, we should kind of match some things up. And I'm like, well, the way things are going, like right here, we definitely need something. So I think I might do, you know, some, <laughs> I always do that. I might do, and I'm doing it already. So I just want to add in a few more marks just to fill up the little space a bit. Um, and some leaves there, right there too. That'll be really pretty. Just starting small and kind of going from there. I know that there's some places where I have to draw some, like right here, some little stems. So do your stems as you see fit. Connecting everything together if, it, if, if you need to. If it bothers you, if it doesn't bother you, then do it. It's all good either way. Um, adding in some dabs of green for a little bit of that shadow. A little more concentrated green over here. Yeah, so I'm enjoying this one. I think in a in a perfect world, which we do not paint in, in a different world, I might not do the blue, but at the same time, he's different. You know, he's not following suit with all the other ladies, all the other ladies in the picture, and that's fine. You know, he's doing his own unique thing, and I have to accept that is okay. My brain is still fighting this idea of symmetry, and symmetry, is not necessary. Okay, Jamie? Okay. All right. Okay. Always gotta sing or do something. Gotta be happy, guys. If you're not happy, I don't know. Life is hard, man. Okay, we're going to do some marks here. I'm gonna grab this purple, because it's here. 
And I'm just, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. What am I doing? I don't know. Just some like marks thing. Marks. Yeah, just like that. Just like so. You know, I told you that these petals, these flowers have a lot of petals that are winding around and so might as well make the marks on it like that too. I mean, I want it to look different than what's happening everywhere else, so. Yay. Do what makes you happy with your painting. Just go for it. Guys, remember I do teach Patreon. Yep, that's exactly what I would say. Well, I do teach watercolor on Patreon as I'm adding in a few tiny strokes. And the link is in the description. I'm just saying, if that's something that you've been thinking about joining for bonus content, exclusive tutorials, um, art prints, live stream, all that stuff, you know, you can try for free for seven days if you want to check it out, linked in the profile. All right, you know, I'm just, you know, at this point, just like I'm feeling free, fancy free, and just kind of starting to add in some things, some marks that you know may or may not be something i love and it's okay you gotta try new stuff you gotta try new stuff so with this statement here i'm not really seeing like a lot of contrast so what i would do is grab some brown if i were you if i were me if i were us and i'm just gonna do some just little you know stamen marks over the top of that just to darken those up and i think that's fine to do. I'm doing it. All right, so that you can really define that center. It kind of looks like a star now. And if you wanted, you could always do some more yellow over the top as well. Guys, we are very close to being done with this painting. I hope you are enjoying it. I'm really, I'm having a blast with this one. Keeping the, the colors lighter, but the florals, so you can add in all the fun, you know, decor, which is the the design aspect, you know, the floral details and all that, which is the fun, really, that's my, I say it's the fun part, it's my favorite part. So maybe it's not your favorite part, I'm gonna add a center here, but it's my favorite part. So I call it the fun part. Right there, okay, so take a step back and see, all right, what does my floral composition need at this point? And I will take a break for a second and I'll be right back. Okay, after thoroughly examining this, I decided I liked having this three point situation happening here and I didn't want to make it square and I don't want to like make it round, but I think I wanna add some lavender here and you know, I don't know, maybe something jutting out here and just call it a day. I feel like this will be a good, you know, composition situation. So that's all we're doing. That's what I'm doing. You can join me if you'd like, cause you know, you're already here, so why not? Why not? Okay, a little bit of lavender there. And just a little bit of extra of green. What am I doing? Just a little extra there. Yeah. So, okay, we're gonna connect these now. <laughs> As I'm examining what I did. Oh, I hope you're still with me. I hope you're, oops, I hope you're enjoying all of this. I feel like I say that a lot. I hope you're enjoying this video, but I do. I hope that I truly do because I'm having a great time. I feel like this video is probably, I'm just guessing about 35 minutes. That's kind of been my average lately. And with all the details and stuff, it's just usually working out to be the same kind of every time. And so, you know, that's, that's what you get. That's what you get from me. Long video on how to paint whatever's. And yeah. Okay, so I, I'm liking the asymmetry. We're just gonna leave it like that, cause we can. But I am gonna add in some splatter, guys. Cause you know, I almost never, I almost never skip it. So we got our beautiful, um, beautiful splatter here, purple. And I twist and turn the brush so that I don't get the same angle. Sometimes it splatters in a line. You have a bunch of lines, you know, going across it. And I just want it to look you know, just organic and um, fun. All right, guys. Well, if you have anything else you want to add to your painting, by all means, go ahead and do that now. But this guy, this painting is done, in my opinion. All right, so we finished up our loose florals with details today, and I hope you enjoyed painting this. Let me know in comments if you like this type of tutorial with the details, it just makes them really fun and three-dimensional. Is that upside down? No, it's not. Oh my goodness, it probably could be. 
probably both go either way, sideways. Thanks for painting with me today. I had so much fun. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.